don't know what it is. It bit. It bit hard. I got him. Yeah. Nice. Got such a nice layer on it. That's, lot, that's just my style. <laughs> like a Coca Cola bottle. We got 10 shad. Our truck in the dungeon ass. Just in case you haven't heard it, my job is to get you off dock and back to dock, which means we have a strict no swimming policy. My bottom goal is to get you all some lean cotton halibut. Are we ready to go fishing? Oh. All right, let's do it. Three hour ride, get comfy, uh, get cozy. Yep, he said three hour ride. You guys didn't hear? I'm for nap. So I feel like it's gonna pay off. We're gonna save this boat, we're gonna tow them back, and we're gonna go back out there and I'm gonna catch a 250 pound halibut. What do you think, is that possible? He says, hell no, that ain't possible, dude. You're living in a fantasy world. 
Zane Final Fantasy 7, he says. You guys remember that game? Final Fantasy 7? Drop some comments. What? Yeah. Dude, I used to sit in my room play Final Never Fantasy for hours. Once I played, all the addicts out there listening, I used to be one of those Magic the Gathering guys, dude. <laughs> I used to play Magic the Gathering, except you know what I used to do? I used to buy and sell those cards. I used to flip them. I gotta turn the camera off for this story. Dude. I can't tell you guys my secret. That's not lying. Yeah. Oh, there's something on there. Oh, yeah, Malibu. Well. was I felt like our line scope was getting out so far was staying on the bottom quite well so instead of doing these big giant jerks like we're doing right now we're a little more vertical I just gave it a couple little tinier jerks to try to keep it on the bottom a little bit longer and it worked out and I got my first halibut out of the deal my turn rocking the rainbow trout poke now Colt's gonna lure in the fish with the cod because it's going to taste better and he's going to see this amazing little trout and that's what he's going to eat here we go 40 pounder I'm calling it About took it out of my hands on that first bite. Let him settle into it. I got him. Yeah. On the rainbow again, too. On huh? the double rainbow. Double rainbow. Taste it. Rainbow. That one wanted to taste the rainbow. You wouldn't be resting that on the rail. Which I mean, I think you just got to hold that rod, get it up off the rail, Jordan. We want you to feel the whole aspect of this. This is deep sea charter fishing. When I get a big fish, I can't hold it Vessel Wind Song. They've been in contact with also Atika. Uh, one Mr. Jordan had a drop call at 911 and they want to make uh, sure that you're on deck and yeah, safe. Yeah, we're good. Do you have a 911 call? I think somebody hit this. Are you a little concerned about being uh, safe on Vessel Wind Song? <laughs> no, we're safe. Okay, well, somebody did it. I want you to be safe, happy, and healthy. All right, no swimming, right? Oh, yeah, so I missed two, two 206 telephone calls. Uh, that'll be Coast Guard, Prince Rupert. Yeah, yeah. no, we're good. Yeah, fantastic. We're chilling. Yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> How did you call 911? How does that Somebody keep pushing the button and it hits E911. Hilarious. What's up everyone? So we ended up coming inside because it just got not very good out there. We struggled really hard to find the halibut. We ended up getting four. Couldn't really do any lingcod fishing because we were gonna go like 50 miles out, but our time got a little messed up this morning towing our fellow angler back in. But now we're on a bloodbath. The tacos are coming into the boat. Let's get some more. I'm hanging a filleted heron. 
and I'm going for the big lean car. There's only a couple rods in the boat that have bait on it. I'm one of them. Just gonna let it hang down there, do the hang dangle. Wait for a grab. Come on, Cole, give me one. Doesn't feel big though. It feels little. It's all right though. It's a taco. It's a taco. I went to a bigger bait, hoping I could get a bigger fish. It didn't really work for me. It just made catching the smaller ones a lot harder. <laughs> We're in the coffers, Benjamin.
Pond. And we got some rockfish on the way that's still getting cut up. But I'm gonna do my favorite recipe and we're all gonna enjoy before these guys take a long trip home. We stay here and film. Let's get this going. Well, off camera, got one finger, but I still got four more, so we're good. This might have been the first time I've cut myself on an addicted video. And if it isn't, it's been a long time. It's okay. We all have to fail at some point. Okay, I'm gonna do these halibut, these perfect little chunkers. The thing about the halibut is it's very flaky, so if you do have a nice fish like the one that Clint got here, then yes, everybody, we're stealing Clint's fish. He wasn't too happy about it, but we didn't give him a choice. For the record, I did threaten to throw him in the marina. Okay, we're looking good here. Um, honey, it's probably that um, stays on ink. No, I knew it was yeah. So, again, some of the saisoning. Not just a clever name. I'm just gonna hit this stuff. I'm gonna hit it hard. This stuff is really nice. I can smell a lot of parsley, a little bit of dill, a lot of garlic, a little bit of onion. And I'm gonna go pretty generously on one side. And I'm just gonna give her the old toss -rooney. It's one of my favorite ways to season up fish. Nice part, nice, one thing you really do want to do before you toss it into the batter that I'm going to be doing here um, is let it sit for a little bit. Let that seasoning, let all those essences of those flavors start to soak into that fish a little bit. Give it about five, 10 minutes. Don't just throw it right in the bag. It's a good pile of meat right there. Okay, and in the bag. What's in the bag? We got, of course, the instant potatoes. But this week I went with the garlic parmesan flavor. It's going to go really good with that saison. And it's honestly my favorite one in general. You can use the plain ones and add whatever flavors you want to it. Works really good, but I love the garlic parmesan or just the, the buttery garlic one. Adds a really nice flavor to any white fish. So into the bag we go. I'm gonna go two or three, four chunks at a time. Don't wanna overdo it, so you want a good even coverage. Okay. Shaking not stud. Last little bits in there. And again, another part of the operation here that you wanna let sit for a little while. And you want to give that time for that starch to bond with that fish, kind of like a father-son bonding experience, but if that hits too close to home, more like a starch and protein. On to the most important part of all, the ta ta. First and most important element to the ta ta is the pick. Now I like to go a nice, heavy amount of pickles. It's kind of my favorite part of the tartar is getting that nice little crunch from the pickle in with that nice flaky fish. I'm gonna try to kind of cut this up relish style. Such a nice layer on it. That's the beautiful, beautiful part of using that instant potato. It's just a nice, flaky, light, crisp little outer shell to it. It's not that heavy batter. That's one of my least favorite kind of batters. It's like a heavy beer batter where it really takes away too much flavor from the fish. You don't get that nice, crispy bite to it like you will with this stuff. So, again, if you guys haven't caught on yet in all these videos, instant potato is is a clutch, clutch move when it comes to frying fish of any sort.
Now, back to my ta-ta. It's a very ADD style of kitchen here. But it always works out in the end. So I'm gonna go pretty heavy. It's all up, the mustard. Spicy mayo. A little bit more of the saison in there for a nice little bite to it, a little wang if you will. Take our fork, give it a good whip. Typically I'd throw a little bit of ketchup in here, but we were short on ketchup today. That's all right, we will survive. Well, no, a traditional tartar doesn't really have much ketchup in it either. It's mostly just mayo and mustard, so. A little bit of vinegar in there if we had it. We're also short some vinegar, that's okay. Still gonna taste great. Mm, that's just right. Mmm, they must have smelled it. What's going on here, boys? Just a little frying up stuff. Oh, is this halibut? It's a little bit of everything. Halibut? We got we got butt and we got we got cod. Black cod? Nope. Ling cod. Ling ling cod. Ling ling. Burns me somehow. I don't know how that happened. Say when I'll be your local bear. Go for it. Dive in there. Just don't, just don't sue me if you burn your lips off. Oh, oh. Ooh, oh, 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 oh. Take it. Huh? <laughs> oh, no, Not only do we thank the fish on this one and the creator, we got to thank Winsong for having us out here today. This is an incredible experience. First time ever fishing in this area and probably one of the most beautiful areas we've ever ocean fished. From the very beginning of the day to riding out the waves out there and working hard to the end of the day taking photos next to those beautiful rocks and just soaking up the best that the far northwest corner of this country has to offer. And an Clay got day. that 40 pounder at the very end uh -huh. to put the icing on the cake. Just a slam dunk. It yep. tastes like a 40 pounder. <laughs> Ask everyone, what is your guys' favorite way to cook this type of fish? Halibut, rockfish, how do you like to cook it? It's hard to beat what Jordan's doing right here. Mm. Mm. Well, everyone, we really appreciate you being along for this video. This is an amazing time. And of course, we couldn't be doing all this without you. If you guys want to see more fun ocean videos just like this one, go up here and click this link to the next video. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn those bells on, give this video a big sore thumbs up, and comment below, and you can be the comment of the day just like this person right here. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We stay fishy. See you out there.